Hey everybody, Steph here. Thanks for tuning in. Today's a quick video on copper carbonate versus copper oxide. About three months ago, I was receiving a half dozen or so messages about copper carbonate. If I stocked it in my Etsy shop, what did I know about it? And honestly, I've never used it. So I went and bought some as a sample. I sent some off to some friends. And I am going to do a quick little test today to see how copper carbonate compares compared to copper oxide, which I am well familiar with. Excuse me. So what I'm going to do is I've just put, I've used my little tiny Fritz spoon, and I've just put a little bit of copper carbonate in this container and a little bit of copper oxide in this. I'm going to use some glass tack, the original red glass tack that's super thin. And I have here two pieces of thin two millimeter bullseye glass. These were originally cut to be night lights, so I thought I'd just use them up. I have two more pieces on each side here that I have glass tack gelled together, so that will give me six millimeters of glass and give me four millimeters on top of the copper uh, carbonate and oxide. But to start, what I'm gonna do is provide just a few drops that should be enough, up to the copper carbonate. Stir with a pair of tweezers and see what it does. Because I legitimately have no idea how this stuff works. Um, from what I've read, it gives a different color of blue, but we will find out. And it mixes up kind of like milk and powder. So let's see what it happens. Little paintbrush. And I'm going to just paint it on real quick, not real thick. Um, actually, I'm going to paint it on that thick on one side, and then I'm just going to keep painting, use all of that, and see if thinner matters. So this ends thinner, this ends thicker. We'll see how that works out. So that's the copper carbonate. And then This is the copper oxide, which I will use the other end of the tweezers for to mix. That way I don't contaminate them. And we're familiar with copper oxide. I use, do a lot of copper bubbles. Fortunately, I got the big brush for this one because my smaller brush wandered off. So I'll just paint it on real quick. I'm also aware I don't need a whole lot, but I'm gonna put one end a bit thicker just to see how it works. So again, we've got one end thicker, one end thinner. And we are gonna top with two sheets of two millimeter thin to make a six millimeter blank. I've got a series of dots to whack into the kiln, so I'm gonna run these in. It's not gonna be your standard full fuse schedule. This is gonna be up to full fuse, hold for 10 minutes and off. And then once they're cool enough, I'll bring them back and we'll look at them and have some thoughts. So we'll start again. Okay, I'm back and I have the samples of copper carbonate and copper oxide. Thankfully, I checked my kiln uh, when it was still warm to see who was who because my cousin gave me a hand and pulled these out of the kiln and cleaned them for me. And I, if I hadn't seen, I would have had to guess who was who. Um, I think I could have figured it out, but uh, I did, like I said, I did catch them. This is copper oxide. I'm gonna bring it up closer. See, bigger bubbles. And this is the line I drew where it was all black and pretty thick. And you can see where there's still dark from where the leftover copper oxide didn't oxidize and make bubbles. So that is where the line is. This is where the thinner brush marks are. You can see them. And this is copper carbonate. And I think it's kind of interesting that, again, it didn't oxidize everywhere. I'm pointing off. But where it was lightly applied, it really didn't bubble. You have to apply it pretty thick. I mean, there we go. Heavier brush, fuller coverage, lighter strokes. Um, so copper carbonate, I really, the color looks the same. I'm assuming copper is copper is copper. Um, uh, so it doesn't really matter which you wanna use. I think in the end though, if you want bigger bubbles, go for copper oxide. If you want smaller, finer bubbles, go for copper carbonate. Um, me, I like the copper oxide myself. If you want to play and uh, 
see what the difference is like between the two. I'll have some copper carbonate up in my shop, but I don't think it's something I'm going to regularly carry just because copper oxide works just fine. But this was an interesting little test of two essentially identical pieces. Again, these pieces were two millimeters on the bottom, a layer of copper carbonate or oxide mixed with original glass tack, the red, the red thin stuff, uh, painted on, thick on the top, thin on the bottom, topped with two layers of two millimeter, and then full fused. And my full fuse schedule was as fast as my poor kiln could go, which isn't very fast. It takes about five hours for it to get to a top fusing temperature, held for 10 minutes, and then off. So these haven't even been annealed. If I'm going to use them, I will have to either cut them up and then anneal them in a project, or I will anneal them and then fuse them to something. Uh, for now, they're just going to sit as they are. But that is the ultimate copper, and you, you can see here, this is what the copper carbonate looks like when it dries. It's kind of a, I don't know, looks like the Statue of Liberty. And then, da da da, -da there's copper oxide. So I'm going to keep stocking the copper oxide, but I've got a chunk of copper carbonate, and I will have it in the store, but I, once it's gone, it's gone, because I like copper oxide bubbles myself. Thank you all for watching, and I'll see you with another video soon. Hey, it's Steph, and I appreciate you watching my video. YouTube will recommend another one down below, so if you want to keep watching, just click on it.